Welcome to the Potter Blog site, April 30th, 2014. An electrical design flaw at the WIP facility in Carlsbad, New Mexico led to a nearly catastrophic Midwest airborne plutonium release. And it may yet still. And by catastrophic, we mean uninhabitable. The entire Midwest would have become in, uninhabitable because of the amount of plutonium and americium released. And we'll give you the details here. Yeah, the site, the website, has a system of systems design flaw which virtually guarantees that even a moderate underground fire affecting the nuclear waste will cause the facility to lose power, resulting in uncontrolled massive release of plutonium and, and americium. This exact catastrophic situation had started to occur on Valentine's Day during the nuclear fire at the WIP facility when, by the grace of God, Elevated wind speed spun up and reduced the airborne amount of americium and the uh, radioact the clouds' radioactive density. This act of divine providence served to lessen americium's ionization interaction with WIPS electrical substation to the point where the electrical arc flashes were noted, but power loss did not occur. Now, if you want to understand that in some more detail, we've up. Uh, given some really detailed information about what happened there uh, based on uh, DOE's accident investigation report and we have a link to it here uh, we discuss this radioactive burst in, in great detail to help you understand it but uh, here's the systems of systems design flaw that uh, WIP has uh, one WIP's electrical substation is located directly next to the mines ventilation exhaust shaft and so here, if you can see from this photo, this Google map, here's where all the exhaust gases out of the mine come out. And they float over here to the substation. Well, on this Valentine's Day uh, nuclear fire, americium plutonium floated out over the substation and caused electrical arcing. Nearly shut it down. Now, item two of this system is systems failure. In the event of nuclear fire, ionizing plutonium and americium are discharged directly in the substation, so we described that. And here's the thing that you don't know. WIPS underground continuous air radiation monitors are not placed to detect radiation in the six plus foot cavernous airspace floating above the underground workers' heads. So here we have a photo of uh, the other underground at WIP two guys riding, riding an electrical cart and you can see how much airspace is over their head. Now over here at the right we have one of these underground air radiation monitors, a CAM. Now let me go to a closer look at here on it where we discussed it in our previous web page. Zoom out just a little bit. And what you'll see here is uh, this thing's about four or half feet tall this is the air intake. The air intake is right at the five to six foot level. The reason it's at the five to six foot level is because this system is designed to make sure that the workers do not inhale or uptake more radioactivity in a year than is allowed by law. So the workers are breathing down here at this level. So to make sure that they're measuring that, they measure down here at this level. They're not measuring the radiation up here at the ceiling. So when you have a fire, like we had on Valentine's Day in the nuclear material, fire slash explosion, all that radioactive material is hot in the smoke, and it's up here floating at the top, above where this sensor can detect it, so it can't even detect it. So this stuff was shooting out for about an hour before it actually got down low enough where this uh, continuous air monitor can detect it. And that's when the alarms went off. But uh, that substation started arcing roughly I think 23 minutes before the alarms went off and so it had the air had to build up, the plutonium and smoke had to build up and rush through the facility to make it out to that uh, substation but uh, so we get to item four and as we just described item three the mislocation of these uh, radiation detectors because these are not designed to protect you and I from radiation releases they're designed to measure how much radiation these people inhale it's akin to putting a smoke detector on the side of a wall instead of a ceiling and that's exactly what happened now americium is known for its ability to ionize air and cause electrical discharge it's used for exactly that purpose in smoke detectors 
So as we said here in number four, when that americium was discharged and started to build up over the electrical substation, that arc has resulted in arc flashing. Uh, On-site security referred to it uh, as a green burst. So next, item seven of the systems of systems design flaw. Power loss at WIP equates to uncontrolled ventilation of the mine and an inability to evacuate workers. Eight, uncontrolled ventilation during a fire means loss of containment as demonstrated by the February 5th underground fire. So, for those of you who don't know, before they had this fire, fire slash explosion in the uh, nuclear material, they had a fire about 10 days beforehand that occurred in a uh, in a transportation vehicle underground. And uh, here's an image from uh, the current Argus of smoke coming out of the uh, one of the air intakes to the facility. That should never happen. Air is only supposed to go inside here. Several people got injured in this fire. Now had this fire occurred near one of the uh, uh, waste uh, material areas, the waste storage areas, this situation would have been catastrophic because uh, enough americium plutonium would have been released that it would have shut down the, uh, the substation through arcing. Now there are other aggravating factors here. One is that the difficult salt related environment conditions at WIP make it nearly impossible to operate real-time underground radioactive air monitoring without a high level of perceived radioactive false alarms. It's exactly this condition which caused site employees to disregard the veracity of the radiation alarm until 11 hours after it sounded when somebody went and took secondary manual readings uh, outside on a filter. So there's no good way for them to fix this. There's no good way for them to detect radiation inside that facility without constantly setting off false alarms. Item two, WIPS plan to further increase underground ventilation rates makes real-time underground detection even more difficult and increases the chances of, under, of undetected stagnation pooling of radioactive materials at the electrical substation during no wind conditions. So what that means is now what they want to do is they really want to blast air out of here much stronger than they Previously, right before this fire, they were doing 200 and I believe 60 cubic thousand feet per minute of air was flowing through here. They want to greatly increase that. Well, if you have more air flowing through here, that means there's less radiation per unit of air going through the mine, meaning it's more difficult to detect it. But what happens is, after it comes out of here, shoots out of here, it pools up over the substation. You know, it's like shooting uh, water out of a fire hose. Yeah, it comes out really fast, but then it eventually builds up. So when there's a no wind condition, it's even more likely when the ventilation rates are high that if something leaks out, that it's going to go leak out undetected for an extended period of time and pool over the substation and cause arcing. So our conclusion is, is that the Midwest nearly became uninhabitable on Valentine's Day. Had wind speeds not picked up to the point, had not picked up the plant, the facility would have lost power. It is possible that the nuclear fire on Valentine's Day would have become naturally ventilated and uncontrolled, much like what happened during the February 5th fire when an underground vehicle had caught fire. So we don't know yet the extent of the Valentine's Day fire and how much further it would have spread had the uh, ventilation rates not dropped down when the cam alarm went off. But uh, it's possible it could have spread much more. And in the same light, on that February 5th fire, if the vehicle fire had occurred in the nuclear waste storage area, the resulting burning materials would have been enough to basically shut down power. And that loss of control would have resulted in the entire Midwest being contaminated enough plutonium and americium that even the DOE would have a hard time covering it up. And obviously, if the plant loses, the, loses power, the workers are stuck down there. So as it stands now, the Department of Energy has not publicly recognized any of these deadly design deficiencies. It's unclear if they're acting out of incompetence or some sort of twisted greater good concept rationalizing the risk away for national security reasons. Because this, this site stores 
weapons grade plutonium. That stuff's got to go somewhere. So they have every reason in the world to keep that side open and basically wave off the risks to the public. But one thing is for sure, if DOE does not relocate and or further risk mitigate WIP substation, the entire Midwest remains at risk.